Hello everyone, and welcome to our first geometry video of the year. I'm excited, are you? In this first video, we'll do a review of what you learned in Algebra 1 about solving equations. Okay, we'll look at multiple types of equations that you solved before and review the steps that it takes to solve them. Okay, so in this first example, make sure you're taking notes, we'll look at an equation where the x terms are on the same side of the equal sign like this problem. 9x minus 5 plus x minus 25 equals 90. Okay, Both x terms, the 9x and the x, are on the same side of the equal sign. They're both on the left. Okay, so what do we do in this situation? Well, notice that we have a bunch of terms on the left side. We can combine them. The 9x and the x are like terms because they both have an x. The minus 5 and minus 25 are also like terms because they are constants or numbers. I can combine them. 9x plus x gives me 10x. If I combine the minus 5 and minus 25 together, that is minus 30. Okay, the 90 stays the same. It didn't change. So this first step is combining like terms. Okay, now recall when we're solving an equation, we're trying to get the x by itself on one side of the equal sign. Here we're multiplying the x by 10 and then subtracting 30 to get 90. In order to figure out what number should take the place of x, we need to undo in the reverse order of PEMDAS. Okay, that's important. If you recall, in PEMDAS, the A and S stand for add and subtract. So we should undo addition or subtraction first. The addition or subtraction that we have here is the minus 30. Okay, what is the opposite of subtracting 30? Well, it's to add 30. So I'll add 30 to cancel the subtracting 30. Now, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So if I added 30 on the left, I must add 30 on the right. Okay, so on the left side, because subtracting and adding are opposites, those cancel, and I'll get rid of them. That means I only have a 10x on the left side of the equation. Then 90 plus 30 is 120. Okay, now I need to undo any multiplication or division. Now recall that 10x really means 10 times x. So what is the opposite of multiplication? It's division. So I will divide that side by 10 so that I can remove the 10. That would leave me with only x. That's what I want. Then I divide the 120 by 10, because what do you do to one side? You must do to the other. And 120 divided by 10 gives me 12. Okay, so the value of x is 12. I can check it by plugging it into the original equation if I wanted to. Okay, let's look at another example. In this second example, we'll look at when x terms are on opposite sides of the equal sign. Like, in 3x plus 27 equals 11x plus 3. Okay, our strategy when we have x's on opposite sides is to collect the x terms on one side of the equation and collect all of the constants, or numbers, on the other. Okay, so because the larger x is on the right side, let's collect the x terms on the right side. I can do that by subtracting the smaller of the two x terms. If I subtract the 3x from both sides, then on the left side, I remove all of the x's. The only thing I have on that side of the equation is a 27. 11x minus 3x is 8x. Then I still have the plus 3. Okay, all of my x's are on the right side of the equation. Okay, but now I need to get all of the constants or numbers on the left side. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, that would leave me only 8x 
on the right side because adding and subtracting 3 cancel each other out. 27 minus 3 is 24. Okay, so now to get x by itself, I need to undo the multiplication. To undo multiplying by 8, I need to divide by 8. That would give me only x on the right side of the equation. 24 divided by 8 is 3. All right, so now we have the value of x for that example. Notice that in this step right here, all of our x terms were on the right side, and all my numbers were on the left side. All right, let's look at another. Example 3. Here's a combination of both. We have x terms that are on the same side and on opposite sides. So we just need to do the same steps. I have some like terms that I can combine. So 8x and 3x make 11x. Likewise, positive 2 and negative 7 combine to make negative 5. And nothing happened on the right side. Now I have x's just on opposite sides. I need to gather all of the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other. Oh yeah, that's just a note for us like terms. Okay, so let's collect all the x terms on one side. The larger one is on the left, so let's move them all to the left. If I subtract the 7x there, those will cancel, and I'll have 4x minus 5 equals 15. Let's now collect all the constants, or the numbers, on the other side. If I add 5, that will undo the minus 5. Then I will have only 4x equals 20. Divide both sides by 4, that would give me x equals 5. Following along? Let's look at one more type of equation. That's the quadratic equation. Okay, you probably learned multiple ways to solve quadratic equations in Algebra 1. We're going to focus on factoring. So here's an example. x squared minus x equals 2x plus 10. The squared on the x is an indicator that it's a quadratic equation. Whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you need to use an entirely separate strategy. Here, let's collect everything, the x's and the numbers, on one side, and we'll leave zero on the other side. So, I'm going to take everything that is on the right side of the equation and bring it to the left side. To get rid of the 2x, I'll subtract 2x, because adding and subtracting are opposites. To get rid of the 10, the opposite of adding 10 is subtracting 10, so I'll subtract 10. But if I do it to the right side, I have to do it to the other side. But notice that, oh, on the right side, I have 0 now. That's what I want. We want 0 on one side. But I'll have to subtract the 2x and the 10 on the left side. The minus x and minus 2x combine to make negative 3x. Pretending that there's a plus 0 on the first line, 0 minus 10 gives me minus 10. So now I have x squared plus or minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. I've collected everything on one side and left 0 on the other side. Okay, what do we do from here? We need to factor it. Okay? We need to find two numbers that, when you multiply them, you get minus 10. And when you add them, you get minus 3. Hmm, can you think of what those two numbers are? Those numbers are negative 5 and 2. Because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Okay, once you've identified the two numbers, you put them into two sets of parentheses. So using the minus 5, I have x minus 5, 
and using the positive 2, I have x plus 2. This is the factored form. If I double distribute, doing x times x is x squared, x times positive 2 is 2x, negative 5 times x is minus 5x, and minus 5 times positive 2 is minus 10, and I combine like terms, I'll get back my original equation. This is a way that you can check to make sure that you get the correct factored form. But what do I do with it now? So to solve it, I have, so here's my equation, x minus 5 times x plus 2 equals 0. We need to use something called the zero product property. This means that whenever two things multiply to give 0, as we have here, this times that equals 0. One of those has to be 0. Okay, so either the x minus 5 is 0, or the x plus 2 is 0. So I can say, okay, what value of x would make x minus 5 0? Well, if x was 5, then that means that that first value would be 0. That's one of my possible answers. Or, what if x plus 2 was 0? Well, the value that would make that happen is x equals negative 2. If I put x equals negative 2 in there, I would have negative 2 plus 2, and that would be 0. Okay? So, both of those are possible answers for that question. Okay? Most quadratic equations have two answers for the value of x. Keep that in mind. Okay, I realize that was a lot of review, but we'll spend some more time practicing it in class. That's the point of doing some of these videos. All right, well, that's the end. So I'll see you guys in class.